Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos just like this one. And if you already have, please just confirm that it's still active. It's a well-known fact in the world of professional wrestling that Vince McMahon has an iron heart, but today we have nine instances to prove otherwise. Guys, today we present you with nine instances in WWE history that proved that even Vince McMahon has heart. Number nine, Alundra Blaze, you were right, that belt sucked. In the early days of the Monday Night Wars, WCW went heavy on the offensive, striking as many blows against WWE as possible. One of the most infamous took place on the December 18, 1995 episode of Nitro, where the current WWE Women's Champion Alundra Blaze jumped ship and reverted to her original wrestling name, Medusa. In her defense, she'd been released from her WWE contract with little aplomb, effectively sending the message that Vince McMahon gave up on women's wrestling for the time being. Offended over the move and convinced by Eric Bischoff it could reintroduce her to WCW as a star, Medusa had no problem throwing the women's championship into a garbage can upon her Nitro debut. For years after the incident, the name Alundra Blaze was basically written out of WWE history, until she was suddenly forgiven and inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2015. Blaze dug the women's championship out of the trash at her induction ceremony and has since participated with various WWE Network specials, proving all ill will is truly behind them. Number 8. Hey Billy, I Still Love You In the late 1970s, the bombastic claims of superstar Billy Graham made him one of the first cool bad guys in wrestling, predicting a trend that would gradually take over the industry and play a huge role in the development of sports entertainment. WWE goes back and forth on giving him credit for doing this, largely because Graham has repaid the favor by attempting to blackmail the McMahon family on more than one occasion. The first publicized attempt came during a 1992 sex scandal, when Graham baldly lied about witnessing WWE officials abusing children on Donahue. He later admitted to making it up, but that didn't stop him from telling more lies some two years later, when he claimed those same fictional WWE officials forced him to take steroids during his time with the company. Regardless of all the hostility, WWE had apparently forgiven Graham in 2004 when he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Number 7. Raven – We're Friends Despite the Lawsuits Although literally hundreds of former wrestlers have attempted to sue WWE at one point or another, Raven nonetheless remains a special case for the nature of what he sued the company over. Along with Chris Canyon and Mike Sanders, Raven argued Vince McMahon and his associates were cheating employees out of healthcare benefits practically since the business was created. Wrestlers for WWE have always been considered independent contractors, essentially leaving them solely responsible for their own non-wrestling related medical expenses, regardless of how much time they spend in the ring. The suit was thrown out when the statute of limitations was passed, and the wrestlers still don't have any health care to speak of. Raven was released from WWE in early 2003, filing his suit the next year. Blackballed from then on, he made a living on the independent scene and TNA until getting welcomed back to film segments for the WWE Network. Though never a huge star in WWE, Raven was one of the standout talents of ECW and WCW, making him an invaluable asset in discussing the history of those companies. Number 6. Eric, thanks for starting a war. It was more than a full decade ago, and fans of 90s wrestling are still unable to get over the shock experienced when Vince McMahon hugged Eric Bischoff on a June 2002 episode of Raw. Bischoff had spent the better part of the last decade literally trying to put Vince out of business, taking Ted Turner's WCW to international prominence and briefly even beating WWE in the ratings. Competition is one thing. But Bischoff's style was particularly combative, giving away raw results on Nitro, stealing away whatever talent he could, and once even challenging Vince to a shoot fistfight. WWE responded mostly by attacking Hulk Hogan and Ted Turner, but everyone knew who was really in charge of things and therefore never imagined Bischoff would work for McMahon when his loftiest goals of wrestling world domination failed. Bischoff didn't last in WWE, however, leaving the company in 2007 and eventually joining Hulk Hogan in TNA. Despite the pattern looking to repeat itself, Bischoff didn't last long in TNA either, and soon returned to WWE by way of a documentary special on the WWE Network. Number 5. Hey Bruno, let's pump up, pal! Reigning as WWE Champion for almost twice as long as his closest competition, 
Bruno San Martino was the top star in the McMahon family business for longer than any other individual. Granted, this time of success came when Vince McMahon Sr. was in charge of what was then called the World Wide Wrestling Federation, and if you were to ask Bruno, the elder McMahon could, at times, be just as controversial as his more famous son. Bruno would first come public about his problems with the McMahons in the early 1980s, when he sued Vince Sr. over unpaid wages, earning a job as a commentator through part of the settlement. He left the company in 1988 and spent the early 90s appearing on whatever talk show that would have him to discuss whatever anti-Vince McMahon subject they felt fit to air. San Martino spoke out against WWE during both the steroid and sex scandals, getting especially heated during discussions about steroids and claiming the company forced his son to use the drug. For decades, it seemed like Bruno and WWE would never reconcile until he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013. Bruno has since made a handful more appearances with the company, including accepting a statue in his image the next year. Number 4. Forgiving Two Guys For Breaking Kayfabe In the modern era, the dual DUI arrests of the Iron Sheik and Jim Duggan still would have resulted in the two breaking the WWE wellness policy and likely getting fired or sent to rehab. In May of 1987, it was arguably far worse for the two legendary superstars, considering they were arch-rivals at the time, and getting arrested for doing drugs together absolutely shattered any surviving remnants of kayfabe. Sheik was fired shortly after the arrest, while Duggan was only momentarily demoted before shooting back to fame. Several months' vacation notwithstanding, Sheik didn't suffer too harshly either, getting rehired in February of the next year. The former WWE champion never quite managed to reclaim his position in the main event, but Duggan was back on top in no time, winning the 1988 Royal Rumble before Sheik even made his return. Both would enjoy many more runs in WWE, eventually finding their way to the Hall of Fame, Sheik in 2005, and Duggan in 2011. Number 3. Kurt, It's Okay If You Lied for all his expounding on intensity, integrity, and intelligence, Kurt Angle has experienced a pretty sordid and unusual post-Olympic career. Certain athletic traditionalists would argue merely becoming a pro wrestler was a waste of his amateur credentials, but WWE fans know Angle definitely made the right choice when he showed an incredible ability to adapt his skills to the sports entertainment environment. It may have been too much too soon, though, as Angle found himself begging WWE for time off in 2006, only seven years into his career. Vince McMahon and company immediately acquiesced to Angle's request, posting a story on WWE.com thanking Angle for everything he did and hoping he would get the medical attention he required. While most fans supported Angle at first, his actions were heavily called into question barely a month later when he signed with Total Nonstop Action and started what would ultimately be a nine-year career with that company. Occam's Razor would suggest that the only explanation is that Angle straight up lied, wanting to spread his wings outside of the McMahon umbrella. Regardless of the reason, many fans thought he would never be welcomed back until he was suddenly announced as an inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2017. Number 2. Sable you may sue me, but I still love you. So popular that she inadvertently destroyed her then-husband Mark Marrow's career, Sable was without question the biggest female wrestler of the Attitude Era. Before you argue China, keep in mind she mostly wrestled men, and we're talking about the women's division. Not initially hired to be a wrestler, Sable became increasingly more famous and transitioned to an in-ring role. Vince and his writers also wanted to put her in exponentially sexual situations, causing her to walk out of the company and sue for sexual harassment. Sable and WWE settled out of court in a matter of months, presumably for considerably less than the $110 million she was seeking. The details on that settlement might be unclear, but what we know for sure is that Sable returned to the company barely over four years later, engaging in what were arguably far more sexual storylines than she had ever participated in before. Though she didn't stay with the company long, we can assume the relationship remains strong, considering her new husband, Brock Lesnar, remains employed to this day. Number 1. Warrior, Let's Bury the Hatchet Only a select few WWE superstars have been lucky enough to get enshrined in gold, making it an especially high honor for someone who committed as many questionable acts as the Ultimate Warrior. Starting off with his misdeeds relevant to sports entertainment, Warrior took advantage of his WWE contract multiple times throughout his career, constantly badmouthing Vince McMahon when he did so. 
The first incident came in 1991 when he demanded pay equal to Hulk Hogan, ultimately getting fined and attempting to resign only for WWE to deny his request. Warrior was forgiven and made a return a few months later, only to once again get in trouble with the brass when he tested positive for steroids shortly after the 1992 scandal broke. Amazingly, WWE welcomed him back again in 1996, only to change their minds barely three months later when he no-showed a number of house shows. Outside of wrestling, Warrior made a highly controversial and homophobic speech at the University of Connecticut, highlighted by his claim, queering don't make the world work. Despite his personal and professional problems, Warrior was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2014, and the next year, the Warrior Award was created in his honor. Well guys, that's our list. Can you think of any other times that might show that Vince McMahon actually has a heart? Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you like this video, please check out our previous video, 10 Recent Deaths of Wrestlers We Totally Forgot. And don't forget to check out our other high-rated videos by clicking at the upper right-hand corner or down in the description field. If you did like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more videos just like this one, and the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and as always, thanks for watching.